These boxes have protected my models for over 30 years and thousands of miles of travel to shows. In this video, I will show you how I make them. Hi, Doug White from Model Car Muse. You know, it's common practice. We're getting ready to go to a show. We've got our models. We put them in boxes, wrap them in microfiber cloth or paper towel, and then you worry about risking knocking off mirrors or hubs or wheels or whatever. If you're packing your model and you're sending it off, you're shipping it somewhere, people have been wrapping it in toilet paper. And then it gets there and then someone has to unwrap it. And that's a lot of handling and that really worries me because I'm often the recipient in my studio photographing people's models of just having to unwrap it. And you really don't know what you're going to get to get, have it unwrapped. You don't know where the mirrors or the antennas are. So there's a lot of handling. I really don't like that. For travel and shipping, I like to make my own boxes with some nice absorbent foam so they're not bumped around. They can sit down inside, be safe. It's also a great presentation. If you're building a model and you're calling it Pro-Built and you deliver it in a nice presentation case, it's an entire package. If you wrap it in paper towel, My design has two elements, the layers of foam and the box that encapsulates. To start, you'll need some polyurethane foam. It's called charcoal foam. Charcoal because of the color. It's designed to be shock resistant for use packing electronics and camera equipment. It's readily available. I prefer working in half inch layers for a 24 scale model. Then you can build it up, set your model in and make sure it's well protected which, with each different level. To determine your actual box size, we're going to work from the inside out, starting with the foam. This is what I have is the starting piece. It's a full base for the model to sit on. That's the first layer of foam. This is one of the first boxes I built. It was a little smaller. Now for everything, I give at least an inch around the car. I'm going to make my box five inches. That gives me to that mark. So for safety, I'm going to move this away from the work area. I know I have a good factory straight edge. It's nice and clean. I'm then just going to take my X-Acto knife and make two or three sweeps to cut through. I know I'm going to take this edge off to make my end cuts because it's just a little rough and ragged. You can use a framing square or a sheet of paper that you can usually depend on for being square. If you line up that edge, you know that you can get your other edge laid in there and that's going to be square. Once you've cut that, to make sure it's good and square. Measure it diagonally. As long as your points are good from there to there, from there to there, you should be in good shape. The dimensions match. So that's the starting base. From there, you're gonna build up more layers. To determine the height, you're gonna to need to measure and figure out how many half inch layers you need to at least cover the wing or be above the highest point of your model. Then cut out as many as you need all the same size, so you can stack them up. So they're gonna be like that. The next step, you're gonna start cutting out the inside so they fit around the model. Starting with the base layer, the only contact the model makes is the tires. Tires are solidly mounted on this. I feel they can handle the weight of the car. You then need to think about the sequential layers. First layer, and that gets cut out, an X-Acto knife. You can mark it with tape to get an edge. Use your straight edges. You can also use chalk as a marker because that you can wipe off easily. First layer goes on. I've decided that there's really not a good contact point for it. So this is just a spacer. It doesn't actually touch the model. I especially want to keep it away from the exhaust tips and the lower front air dam because they could easily be broken off if that makes contact. There'll be other places for contact to hold the model securely. The next layer, this is the first layer that starts to make contact and the contact is at the back. I know the bumper is very secure in the back, so that's actually touching. There's not a lot of contact going around. There's slight contact for just the leading edge of the red part of the nose. The next layer, this one makes a little more contact. Contacts the upper deck lid, the rear tops of the fender. Not quite the fender here, 
but across in the front, the top of this serves to just hold the nose down in place. The next layer goes on, and again, not touching the wing. The wing is glued. I don't want anything bumping into it. I think it can just sit there and hold itself in place. The other point of contact is around the A pillars and the B pillars. This, as cut, fits in pretty tight. And then there's some little notches just to soften the points of contact. The hood hinges on this car float up. They pivot up when the hood is lifted off. I've left an opening for that so they can just sit, just float up naturally. This is left very full and very sturdy. This holds this piece in place really well to give just enough contact to hold the front down. The final layer goes on. This is just slightly higher than the wing. This right here contacts the top of the roof and holds everything in place. This is just a slight friction fit to hold the hood. Little finger notches so you can lift it out. It tells anybody I'm packing this, oh yeah, use your fingers there to pull it out. I pack the hood separately. There are no pins that hold this on the car. It's a floating part. Rather than risk it, sits in its own little well. Because a loose part sitting on the car, it could slide back and scrape the windshield. It could also start to scrape the paint on the top of the fenders if it's loose. We have our stack together and we're ready to build the box that will surround this. Don't shortchange yourself. Use the charcoal foam. Don't use pillow foam or or drawer organizer foam, charcoal foam is not gonna off gas and affect the paint on your model. I don't know if pillow foam is gonna off gas or not, but I would avoid it. This car has been in and out of this box. This is 35 year old Tester's white enamel. It hasn't yellowed. I really do trust this. So now we have our snack and this basically shows us the interior space we need for the box. The next step is you need to encapsulate this. Wrap something around it. I prefer sheet acrylic as a material to make the box. I know a lot of you are woodworkers. It'd be really cool to see someone do a, a box with finger joints. Some of you are welders. How about some really cool beads or some etch around the edges of the weld? I like acrylic because I like the look and I know it's very sturdy. You can find sheet acrylic available on the internet. There are also a lot of good tutorials on how to cut it and how to finish it. I like black, but it comes in other colors. The thickness I prefer is eighth inch. It's easier to work with and you can lap the edges over and get a good firm glue joint. You can cut it. You can use knives specifically for cutting acrylic. Drag it through a couple times and you can snap it over a table edge. A lot like working with glass. If you have a table saw, you can buy a blade that's specifically for plastic. It will cut the most beautiful edge. Those edges, you can finish them with a file. Then you can use a block of sandpaper to smooth it out. And you can even go to the step of using one of your old polishing kits from models. So it's the edges you've cut are just as shiny as the front surface. And this box has a clear bottom. That's so I can cut a hole, a little window in the bottom, and I can look up and view what's inside so I know which model's in there. I like the simplicity. I don't want handles, knobs, or even labels. It's a design choice. Okay, so the lid rides in a track, it slides off. It's got an edge on it that slides inside this track. It has this edge because it's two sheets that are glued together. Also, the sidewalls are doubled. I'll tell you about that in a second. Okay, the first piece we're gonna cut is the base. And the base is only as wide and long as the foam. And that's gonna sit right on top of it. Everything builds into the sides. The two side pieces, from an overhead view, we're looking down on the flat base piece. The inner side piece, runs like this. That's the vertical inner side piece. And then the end caps, and that's gonna lap over the end of that side piece. Gives it a nice clean surface. You will then add another slightly taller piece, more strength to the outside. And that laps over 
this end cap. You have one on each side. Okay, and this piece, this very outer piece, is going to be slightly taller because that's going to be the start of what's going to be the rails that are going to hold the lid in. The lid being two sections. This outer piece will be the same height as the lower section of the lid. On top of that, and from an end view, these being your end rails pointing at you, your lid bottom section will fit along here and then on top of that you'll glue right here a small strip that runs along the top of each edge and that will hold the lid in you'll then put another piece that you'll glue to the lower lid section like that so that becomes all lid I strongly recommend this adhesive. It's the best for acrylic, much better than any model cement or super glue. It's a quick set so you can work fast. For application, I prefer this great tool. This pipette from, it's a touch and flow. They've been around for a while. I think Micromark may have them. You dip it in, capillary action holds it in there and you can run it along your glue joint. Don't work on the outside for these guys. You can just bring it in on the inside. You can also use a pen or a brush. In order to glue the flat panels together, use just a small amount of this adhesive. You could clamp them. You could rest a book on it to hold it tight. It'll hold secure in just a few minutes. If you have a little bit of glue that seeps out on your edges, you can use your polishing kit to take that glue off. Once it's cured, give it a try. I've had these boxes for years. And my glue joints haven't come loose. It's been very dependable. These custom boxes take some of the worry out of shipping models. Still double boxing in two nested shipping boxes, of course. This box has my Studebaker Custom. I built the box shortly after building the model about 30 years ago. Again, the hood piece travels separately in its own foam compartment, as does the wire hood stand. The box has protected the model to and from various shows by plane and by car. It was recently shipped back to me from the Model Car Museum in Utah and survived the over 2,200 mile UPS journey just fine. These boxes are great for carrying to shows, easy to pack and unpack, and can even be used as a display stand. This protective and elegant solution respects the time and effort you spent building the model. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and click on the bell. Follow your muse wherever you may find it, and may there always be a project on your bench. Thank you for watching.